And joining us now is our political editor, Jane Patterson. Jane, what is the government doing about getting these stranded Kiwis home now? Well, of course, you've just been talking to Grant Robertson about the coming months and how people will financially get through this. But right now, there are a lot of people with very urgent needs as that deadline looms in um, just over 24 hours now at midnight on Wednesday. A lot of people, it is transport. If they're not at home and if they're not at a, in a place where they can self-isolate, it's becoming very difficult. And there are two um, different types of people we're dealing with. The first is overseas, um, people who are travelling overseas in particular now the government today has basically said that with key transit routes closing down in Asia, for example Singapore, it's becoming really difficult um, even through government sponsored flights with Air New Zealand to actually get those flights from a lot of countries back to New Zealand. So people still overseas are effectively being told that window has pretty much closed and to find shelter to hunker down um, in the meantime until things return to normal, whenever that will be. Now the second group is people who might be stuck in the South Island um, trying to get back home to the North Island for example and really struggling to get a flight or um, any kind of transport with the rush with everybody else. So the Prime Minister said today, please stay calm. We will make sure that people will get home and that may mean that there are some extra flights or extra transport past that deadline, that lockdown deadline, but that's not going to be widespread and open. It will be for very specific cases. Yeah, she used the words exercising common sense, didn't she, that the government would do that? That's right. So look, we had a, a, a woman this morning very concerned about her daughter in Dunedin um, up all night trying to get her on an Air New Zealand flight, but they were just absolutely jam-packed. So Ms Ardern saying in that situation there will be flights available, um, they just have to work through the details and they just encourage people to keep working and contacting those companies, those transport companies, but the government certainly from its side won't be imposing uh, that strict deadline for people who still do need to get around New Zealand. In terms of coming back into the country, the Prime Minister reiterated again several times today that the people who are the greatest risk to us all are the people who are returning from overseas. And she seemed to be indicating that the government is working on something around that. So what are we expecting? Are we expecting mass quarantines at the site of arrival or, or what? I think that's absolutely the direction that they are heading in and Ms Ardern was pretty blunt when asked the risk posed of course by anyone who was still overseas and arriving back from both our experience and the experience of other countries. So at the moment it sounds like they're really trying to figure out exactly how many people um, are in that category who might be actively trying to come home. People um, register with MFAT but not everyone is on that list. So they're just trying to get a sense of the numbers but I, I very much took the tone that people arriving back would not just be encouraged to self-isolate. Of course, they're returning into a very, very different um, situation as well. It sounded more like there would be a managed, monitored um, quarantine for anyone coming back. So no specific details, but very much the message was if you are arriving back in the country in the next 24 hours, expect a pretty strict uh, set of rules for you when you do arrive. These are very unusual political times, Jane, so we're hearing a lot from government ministers about what's going on. Where is the opposition on all of this? What is Simon Bridges saying? So today the Business Committee, which is basically the, the um, senior MPs from the different parties, have agreed to set up a committee that will be chaired by Simon Bridges as the opposition leader. Furthermore, it will have a majority of opposition MPs um, sitting on that committee with representatives from other parties. Now this is basically a measure to ensure scrutiny of the government's actions, of course across so many portfolios, but economic and health primarily, through the adjournment of Parliament. Um, Parliament comes back tomorrow to um, issue a, a epidemic notice to invoke a state of emergency and also to pass crucial legislation. After that it's adjourned for at least five weeks and potentially longer. So Simon Bridges talking today saying the accountability is very, very important even when we're in this white hot situation. The government needs to have that scrutiny. Now he has 
said that he will be constructive. He said this is not about playing politics or, or creating needless controversy. He said it will be a very constructive process, but basically that committee will have the powers of the Privileges Committee, which means that they can effectively order people to come and present to them, and that might be government ministers, it might be public health officials, it could be banks, it could be any... Um, any companies or agencies that have a major role to play in this. So those meetings will start next week. Simon Bridges intends to stay in Wellington and be physically present at those committee meetings, um, depending on other people's circumstances, whether there'll be other MPs um, or other people there submitting to them in person, uh, will all have to be sorted out. Thank you, Jane. That is our political editor, Jane Patterson, joining us live from Parliament.